we call you, you will answer. submit to you that if God can give life to dead bodies there is no circumstance or situation he can't turn around no situation or circumstance he can't turn around no situation or circumstance he can't turn around and I prophesy and pray for someone who's going through a real dark moment that the God of heaven the God who answered in the time of our greatest need at the audacity of faith Makoti, that Jehovah answers for you in the mighty name of Jesus that he answers for you in the mighty name of Jesus that he answers you in the mighty name of Jesus what would we say David said when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were as them that dreamed then were our mouths filled with laughter. I have heard stories of people coming back to life. And I, I was telling Pastor Kay, I said, sweetheart, you know, I used to wonder like when this happens in our life. I mean, because I've been trusting God to, to see it. I, I remember one time we lost a little boy in church. Oh, my heart went out to the family. My heart went out to the family. I was just in the wrong environment. Wrong environment with the wrong person. You know how, imagine that when they told me Abel is dead and, I, and Mama heard it, and she said, ah, then go bury him now. I was sitting with somebody when that boy passed on, and I turned and told him, I said, Hey, this is my pastor's son just passed on. He said, I made a go bury him now. And this man was an apostle. Someone, ah, uh, I see, I've never felt fate leave me like that. Let me say something to you. Whenever you find your back against the wall, look for someone who can speak faith to your spirit. Avoid people who are not on your faith wavelength. Avoid them. Let me tell you the truth. It is not, it is not being um, um, there's, there's, a, there's a word for it. People, people think that you are encouraging people not to walk in love. Sir, in order to walk in love, sometimes you may have to walk away from some relationships. You don't walk in love to the destruction of your faith. Ah, let me say it again. You don't walk in love to the destruction of your faith. The Bible says, don't be deceived. Evil communication corrupts your good morals or will tamper with your convictions or your stand. If you are a person of faith, look for other faith people. Surround yourself with them and let them feed your faith. The Bible says, if one stands alone, he has no hope. But if two stand together or lie together, there is heat. If one stands alone, he has no hope. But when he falls, who would lift him up? He's talking about people of like-mindedness. Jesus say if two of you shall agree upon anything as in touching it on earth it shall be done by your father who is in heaven careful who you partner with oh nothing is impossible for a person of faith especially when you have faith-based people around you speaking the same language same language you are not down and out it's a phase of life and it will pass it will pass you bounce back with your testimony and you need someone telling you that all the time all the time and that boy passed on then we lost my little we lost our little niece my sister-in-law's baby and they called us to the hospital at this time baby had passed and I stood there in the in the uh, mortuary I'll never forget that day I couldn't console my sister-in-law I didn't know what to say to her. I didn't know what to say. Pastor, are you telling me my baby is gone? That you can't bring my baby back? I'm just a man. Ah, but the pain from a mother's voice. And I've heard testimonies of people coming back to life from the dead. So I used to say, ah, how would we feel when this happens? Can I tell you the truth? I felt absolutely nothing. I felt nothing. Afterwards, I felt nothing. You see the way God works? The following day, the following day, it was a choir member that prayed for the dead and the dead came back. So that pastor does not feel like he is something special. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He didn't say it will follow pastors. It means that in his name, you can cast out devils. It means in his name, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It means in his name, by the leading of his spirit and his instruction and in accordance to his will, you can call the dead back to life and they will respond. In his name. 
which means anything working against your dreams now against your visions and expectations in his name you can stand in the place of prayer and contend for them and God is committed to his word to answering you something special oh he stripped us of everything guess what he said when they called that the, the boy was still screaming I said okay send me your address let me come to you you know what God asked me he said okay you want to go and advertise your face as the raiser of the dead to those people there I mean say leave the room and get there and he will die I heard it clear he said if you leave this room and you get there I will I will describe you he will die yeah so you ask pastor okay I sat on the arm of a chair and I said Lord beautiful Lord so what do I do what do I do what do I do so, so what do I do what do I do I say, call so pastor, call this pastor, give them the bottle of oil, give them the scripture to go and recite over him, pray for the boy, and he will be well. Isaiah 10, 27, in that day, the burden shall be lifted from off thy shoulder, and the yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Bam. They went, administered the same word, administered the oil, and by the mercies of God, he who was under the oppression and the yoke of the wicked is free till today i spoke with him yesterday spoke with him this morning he refused to go back to his father's house guess where he's living he's living in my mom's house now guess what he called me today daddy oh you don't know how it feels <laughs> hallelujah glory to god so that's one of the that's one of the many testimonies the lord did in the city of Macron. It's strange things happen and we give god glory and we give him praise for what he has done and we thank him i want to say again a big thank you to this church for standing with us in prayers for standing with us in financial support for giving us the go ahead and the endorsement to go for that meeting the lord bless and reward you mightily and because the grace was lifted from here to the city of Makodi, all that the lord did in Makodi, we declare he multiplies it in this house in the mighty name of jesus let everything the enemy is attacking everything the enemy is seeking to kill and to destroy everything the enemy is seeking to take advantage of every yoke is intending to put on anybody's shoulders by the virtue of the testimonies and the miracles god worked and wrought in the city of Makodi. we those things are restored we retrieve all that the enemy is seeking to steal we take back everything he's seeking to destroy we declare that they are replenished in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus our joy shall be full and remain established in the name of jesus someone give him a big shout of praise and thanksgiving <laughs> hallelujah amen and amen and we seek your permission again to go back last week of october for one more meeting just one more her sister, Mama Winnie, you guys in in a fire away. You are the ones. You want to check? They will not let you go back. Oh, amen. Can we welcome Sister Winnie back in the house? It's her birthday last week. Was it last week? Yeah, it was your birthday last week. And um, my only my only beef is I saw surprise birthday party. I plan to I plan to harass you. I plan to I plan the harassment. I plan that is I planned it. Amen. You didn't know, Rev. You knew. Oh, you both of you didn't know. But who can you? He was the organizer. Oh, he just showed up. A chai, a chai, a brother, a chai knew. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Uka and John. Okay, I hold Uka responsible for this. Amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Happy birthday, ma. Amen. We still, we, I remember our arrangement. It will still happen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Consistent faith produces consistent victories. Keys to, con four keys of consistent faith. Four keys of consistent faith. Four keys of consistent faith or to consistent faith. Because like we've said in this house over and over and over again, because faith for your victory you need faith for your testimony the thing the enemy is going to attack in your life many many times and almost all the time is your faith and once he can get your faith he can stop the victories he can stop the testimonies hallelujah so four keys four keys of consistent or to consistent faith consistent faith produces consistent victories consistent faith produces um results or consistent results hallelujah consistent faith creates consistent miracles 
When your faith is not up and down, you're not up today, down tomorrow, up today, down tomorrow. You are always up. Things stay in that trajectory for you. Are you following me? Things stay in that trajectory. Ah, pastor, there are days when I feel down in my faith. There might be days when you feel down in your emotions, but don't let your faith go with your feelings. Are, are you getting me? Your emotions are permitted to be on a roller coaster ride, not your faith. And sometimes what we think that is actually faith going down is just our feelings. You felt somehow. Faith is not in the feelings. Faith is a conviction. Faith is a conviction. All right? So what we're about to do is to show you how to keep that conviction constant. So that even if I feel emotionally down, the faith is still constant. And if the faith can be constant, your victory will be constant. You will always come out victorious if your faith is not tampered with. Pastor, what's your... Um, proof from scripture. The Bible says Jesus was walking in the middle of the storm on a certain day when the disciples had been instructed to go to the other side. And while he was walking on the storm, the disciples saw him and they feared for their lives. For they said, alas, it's a ghost. And I've told you that in this house before. They say, all oh, die now die. If we enter water, we die. If we wait for the ghost, he kill us. So make we could enter water, amen, so that they will find our body. Jesus said, hey, don't do that. It is I. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me come. And Peter, Jesus said unto him, come. Upon the declaration of come, Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk on come. Yeah. Hallelujah. And scripture says, he turned his eyes from the master, who is the word incarnate. So he shifted his from the word and began to look at the storms around him the situations around him the circumstances around him that was actually a fact the storm was boisterous the storm was heavy the bible does not say there was no storm the bible says there was a storm not a lie so the situation may be a fact scripture does not deny the presence of challenges or issues but the bible is adamant that a man of faith will always prevail Jesus said, if you will say unto this mountain, be thou removed. And my father used to teach this principle. He said, faith does not deny the presence of a mountain. It only insists that the mountain can be removed. So yes, there might be trials. Yes, there might be setbacks. But our insistence is on the victory. And when Peter began to seek because he took his eyes off Christ, Jesus said to him, why did you doubt, O ye of little faith? Why did you what? doubt which means peter started the journey in faith but ended it in doubt thank god that there was christ there to reach out for him which means before we get to the world i'm already going to help with my notes always have a word you can reach out for when the storms begin to take you under always have a word you can reach out for before we came to Abuja, there's a word God gave me many years ago. Every time I used to preach it in Makodi Church, I, I didn't used to have the full expression. I couldn't express myself fully because I knew I wasn't living its reality. He said, and the Lord said unto Abraham, rise from here, go to your, leave your father's house, go into a land that I will show you that I, in that land I will bless you and make your name great. That I'm, and I was in my, no, not my father's house now. How can you, how can you say that? How can you, how can you, how can you say that? Say that. <laughs> These people, don't, they don't fear me, oh, amen. But I know they fear me, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's the way it felt. It felt like I was in my father's house. I was in my home, home city, or home with the city where I grew up in. I was amongst everything that I'm, I've been familiar with, the, I mean, all my life. And so the script didn't hold weight for me in that city until we moved into the city of Abuja. Then I began to understand the depth of that scripture. What God is saying is, trust me enough to sustain and to make you. Leave everything that you think you have. Trust me to be your maker and your sustainer. Sir, I can't lie. Small only that we have seen. Only small. The scripture is real. Now, every time our backs are against the wall, the first question I ask is, Lord, what is the word? My mind goes there quickly. Leave the familiar. Go to the place that I will show you. There, I will be your maker. There, I will be your sustainer. There, I will be your provider. There, I will be your shelter. There, I will be your protector and your preserver. There must be a word that you can reach out for. So the first thing that keeps your faith consistent is the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, Now faith cometh how? And hearing what? 
faith cometh how? And hearing what? The word of God. So key number one is God's word. The Bible says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him that were made. And without him was not anything made. Which means there is nothing your heart craves or desires that the word cannot produce. So, why as I'm waiting, why as I'm trusting, why as I'm believing, I must hold on to the word. I must keep filling my spirit up with the word. Is it Colossians, Colossians where it says, um, um, uh, let the word of God dwell in you richly? Yeah, I think it's the book of Colossians. Let, the, let God's word dwell in you what? Richly. You can pick that up for us. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. His word is material for the creation of any testimony. And it keeps your faith consistent. It keeps your faith consistent. I've said this before. How the faith comes is how the faith will stay. If it came by the word of God, it will stay by the word of God. So the word of God is like a double element. It's like it, it is planted and it is fed. Okay? It's like a seed planted. Then it's like water that waters the seed. Did you get that? The Bible says the word is water, right? You plant the seed of the word and you water the seed that you have planted with the word. Did you get that? Sanctify them by your truth for your word is truth. All right? So the word is planted and is watered by the word. It's a mystery, sir. It's a seed. It's water. You plant a seed. You water the seed. The word is a seed and the word is water. It, it is both the planted and the watering hallelujah so i didn't get the revelation today and then i dumped my bible oh glory to god god has given me a word god has given me a word the bible says when you receive a word the first thing the enemy will come to do is to test the validity of that word how true is this word he will attack the word an area you've not gotten a word from is not the enemy's business the day you get the word on prosperity woo, we attack your fathers the day you get a word on peaceful home, stability in your home, it looks as if the preaching revealed all the challenges. Oh, yeah? The day you get a word on success, it looks as if the whole world is caging in on you or caving in on you. The enemy always will attack the word you have received. So what keeps the word you've received buoyant and strong is that you are adding word. You are adding word. You are adding word. You are taking it in consistently, consistently. The consistency of the intake determines the consistency of your faith. The consistency of your faith determines the consistency of your victories. Hallelujah. Someone say, I'm victorious all the time. So it's Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of God dwell in you how? Richly. Richly. Amen. Number two. Number two key. Consistent. Be consistent in the place of prayer. Consistent in the place of prayer. Jude 20. Love. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Keep your faith active. He said, we rise into an edifice, an indomitable structure. One that cannot be conquered over when beautified by the creator himself. While we spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. You are beautifying your life. Someone said, praying the Holy Ghost is like breathing into existence that which does not exist. So I receive the word of God. I don't just get the word. I don't just keep the word. I go into the place of prayer. Every moment spent praying in the spirit is a moment spent giving life to God's promise to you. Ah, pastor. So when I was a kid, a prophet of God came and told my mom that, ah, when he was like a seer. Okay. So I entered the room and he said, yeah, this is your son we preach. This is your son will preach. He will leave this country at age 17. Wow. Hello. All my life, from that day, I think I was about 14 years old. I said, three years from now, I'm leaving this country. I cut off from all my friends. All. I say, I'm leaving, I'm leaving the country. I was the only friend. I, well, it preserved my life and protected me. I was the only friend among my friends who was not toasting any yeah, in the neighborhood because... I'm leaving the country. Amen. Whitey, whitey, whitey did that side away from me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, no, no. <laughs> Brother Ames is laughing at me. I didn't do any extracurricular activity. Not because I was 
loving God. Amen. I just wanted to go and meet my wife. No, ah, no, 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 no. Hello? So, age for 15, age 16, age 17 came, and I found myself going to BSU. <laughs> Reverend Edward, the way you're laughing at me. May God forgive you and me. Amen. <laughs> they laughed and looked as if you don't they plan me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Age 17, I'm going to BSU. I say, Lord, this is not what you said. This is not what you told me. My son, go to school. <laughs> I went to BSU first year, second year, third year, fourth year. By the time I got clocked 21, 22, I was in youth service. Ah, oh, man, we forget about this. Then I got answered the call to ministry at age 25. 26, I started pastoring the church as resident pastor. 27, I started pastoring full time. 28, started trusting the Lord. Since we can't do YT, let's do half YT. Amen. We saw. A whitey in Nigeria, we decided to marry Ninja Whitey. Amen. But then I began to remember that a prophecy was spoken over me. This one will preach. I am preaching. This one will be the first of his siblings to travel out. What? Kirasate Perusa. Now with understanding, knowing that a word had been spoken i took that word to god in the place of prayer and i began to hold on to the horns of the altar paul the apostle said to timothy say son my son timothy ah, i bring this charge to you that you would bring into remembrance or yeah bring to remembrance i bring this charge to you that you remember the things that were spoken over you by the laying on of hands while you do prayer or you do warfare with them do warfare with the things that were spoken over you in other words those words that your mother and your grandmother prophesied on your life use them to pray what has god told you in the secret place you see what makes your prayer life pro productive and profitable is that the things you have heard are the things you go back to god with God told you I'm opening the nations to you. Then you just go and sit. Ah, I heard prophecy today. Nations are open. No! In the middle of the night when you wake up, you are wondering, ah, I'm tired to pray. Remember what God said. I am opening the nations to you. Ratike pa, patusa, retoko sanabada. I declare the nations are open. And you are in the place of prayer and you are insisting that the word you heard was your word and that word must come to pass. A sister, look, there are things you do to activate your, your results. Hallelujah. A sister, dear sister, in our, in our Marketi campus had a little challenge. And her husband began to have extramarital affairs. And one night she called me. She was weeping on the phone. And I said, well, Ma, all your crying won't change anything. There are days when I'm nice. There are days when I'm just, I'm just like that. Because sometimes... If the doctor pities the, the patient on the, the patient will not survive. So I said, Ma, you're crying, your crying wouldn't change anything. Have you prayed about this issue? She said, Pastor, I prayed, I'm tired. I said, Ma, <laughs> you're tired? Okay. You're tired? Eh, that means you don't want, you have not seen results, you're already tired. What are you calling me to do? If you're tired, then go and enjoy the life. Amen. Say, Pastor, please pray for me. I said, no. Do you have your wedding gown? She said, yes. I said, this night, pick your wedding gown. And I told her what to do. 12 midnight, go out to God in prayer. Father, I hold on to you a symbol and an offering of my submission to my husband. I dressed up in this to say I do to him. Lord, look upon the sincerity of my heart and turn my situation around. And she prayed that night. The guy was on his way to a political meeting. He stopped in Yandev, or in, yeah, that Yandev roundabout in Boko. He stopped there. Asked the girl he was taking to, he said, come down from my car. Come down from my car. 12 midnight. So, and go, counter, say, enter any of this car, going back to Makodi, go back. He drove. He drove. <laughs> Drove to where he was going. <laughs> Hallelujah. I came back home after the meeting. Honeymoon started. Fresh honeymoon. Sweetheart, I'm sorry. 
I don't know what was coming over me. He came to meet me and confessed to me. He said, Pastor, I don't know. You know all these guys, they used to use all kind of things. It's like my mind was, I said, ah, it's well, we give God praise. If that woman had not held on to the horns of the altar and prayed and cried unto God, her victory wouldn't have been released. Sir, the word comes that your prayer will be effective. The word comes that your prayer will be effective. So when you get the word, don't just settle with the word. Do what? Attach prayer power to it. And I see someone produce testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, that is... Hallelujah. Number three, consistent with your words. The Bible says life and death are in the power of a tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof numbers chapter 14 verse 28 it says as long as i leave it say the lord whatsoever i hear you whisper in my ears that will i what yeah. oh that will i what yeah. do so be consistent with your declarations of faith don't say one thing today and say another thing tomorrow. Today you are speaking faith. Tomorrow because of the people you find yourself around, you are speaking all kinds of doubt and all kinds of chaos into your atmosphere. Amen. Ah, now wow. Be like, say, this country don't finish also. Now so I see the problem. Oh. Can I tell you something? Many people have buried themselves with their words. They are alive, but they are buried. Alive, but not productive they have convinced themselves by speaking the negative things around their atmosphere that they, nothing good can come out of them the bible says joseph had a dream told it to his brothers they hated him then he went and dreamt another one and came and told them again sir so, if joseph was like me the first dream was real the second one i formed it if joseph was like me first dream was real he saw a dream second one that they hated me for i will form a second one that would be better than the first. So the first one, he said he saw sheaves bowing down to him. Am I correct? Second one, he came and said, I saw the sun, I saw the moon, and 11 stars. The first one, he said they were bound to his sheaves. This time, he said they were paying obeisance to me, Joseph. Ah, ah, so you mean father and mother and we will bow for you? I say if he was like me, oh, don't go and say Joseph from the second one. I say if he was like me. Joseph never for once said anything other than what he believed. Even when the, the, the copier of the king was leaving the prison, he said, please, as you go, remember me. He knew he wasn't dying in that jail. Yeah. Remember me. David got into battle, and Goliath was insulting David by his gods. The Bible says, and David rushed towards Goliath and charged him and confronted him with his words as well. Sir, the battle of life is a battle of words. Spirit forces are waiting to hear you say so that they can perform. It is what you are saying into the atmosphere that is becoming your manifest reality. So every time I come to this church and I say, say you are blessed, I know what I'm doing. Say I'm going forward, I know what I'm doing. Say I'm increasing on every side, I know what I'm doing. I'm enlarged, my feet are enlarged under me. I can't stumble, I can't fall. I'm not living in loss, I'm not living in disadvantage. All things are working together for me because I love God and I'm called according to his purpose. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. We're giving your angel things to work with. We're speaking into the atmosphere the realities you want to see. We're conditioning life and the elements of nature to favor you. We're conditioning policies to work in your favor. Are you aware that every time these people, those other people wake up in the morning and they do that chant, that prayer chant, you know what they are doing? They are releasing spirit forces into the atmosphere to favor them. So let me shock you. What happened? Somebody gave me a book for my birthday. My birthday gift. I think it's the best birthday gift I received since I started getting gifts. I love books. Naturally, I won't walk into a bookstore and buy this particular book. Books by Reverend Udukoya of Mountain of Fire and Miracle. Have you not observed that pastor's prayers have changed? Oh, people have not seen it? I'm sure the Makori people are wondering what happened. Who did we invite here? Hello, sir. As I was reading the books, I, at first when I got the book, I said, me, read MFM, me, <laughs> New Creation Man. If you've ever been to my office, there, is, there, there are two books you will see, the Bible and EWK on New Creation Realities. I read New Creation, and then, okay, maybe three, The Anointing by Benny Hinn. I can read New Creation and The Anointing. I can read those books every year, like back to back. Every year, every, sometimes I'll be reading, I see one line, I will underline that line, then I'll see, ah, God. How did this man get this revelation? I will brood on that one line. I won't read the book again, oh. 
That one line, I'll stay with it throughout the year. So when they gave me MFM, I'm whispering because we are downstairs. Amen. I said, Lord, me read this book? The Holy Spirit said to me, said, I would not have brought it into your life in this season if I didn't want you to use it. Read it. Ask mama. I devote the first one. It was a small pamphlet. I read it over in one night. Brrr, pop. By the following morning, I told mama, even I was, what's going on? The things I was saying, it's not consistent with the husband she knows. Then I picked the prayer, hello, sir. Every altar. Madagabata. I didn't know that God was preparing us for what we're going to Makodi for. Because if you hear the story of this family of this boy, you will know that you are digging and confronting altars. And there are some there's some language the spirit that must be rendered to see some results. Oh Lord, I thank you. Now life, I don't walk here. Oh Lord, we thank you. Oh, you're faithful. Oh Lord, you're, if I no walk here, every altar where your spirit is died now, I lose. Don't worry, don't worry. This Sunday, uh, uh, this Sunday, we're going to handle some things. Going to handle some things. What, what you say, what you say, amen. What you say. So he said in one of those books, he said, when these people wake up in the morning to pray, they cast spells into the atmosphere. If you live around the place where they make that prayer, you will observe that when you hear that thing, there's there's one weight that comes upon you. This is what they said that they cast spells with that declaration. Anybody who is not on the side of that religion. It's a spell to walk against you. It's a spell to walk for them. They are speaking dominion into the atmosphere. They are speaking authority into the atmosphere. They are speaking their influence into the atmosphere. They are speaking their power into the atmosphere. They are speaking ownership into the atmosphere. What are you saying to counter it? So, every time, when we first moved, and it, it was strange because we, I grew up in the city of Makodi. Who born you do that thing for Makodi? Who born the speaker plus who is saying it? Don't have time for rubbish. Amen? Or maybe it's my neighborhood, because I don't know how it is in other neighborhoods. 5 a.m., you are shouting that thing in Makodi, who we'll burn everything. Hallelujah. But when I say praying, when I hear the chant and I raise a prayer chant, I began to observe that there's a difference. Even my spirit man comes alive. Even my spirit man comes alive. Then I begin to declare over the atmosphere, my day is blessed. I have favor wherever I turn. Increase wherever I turn. I have authority. I have dominion. I take charge in the mighty name of Jesus. Every door I knock on opens for me. The gates of finance are open. The gate of influence are open. You must speak into your atmosphere if you will see results. So number three. Is a spoken word of faith. I think that's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, where it says, Life, death, and life are in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I want you to look at verse 20. Verse, verse 20. Verse 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruits of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. A man's belly shall be satisfied with what? The fruits of his mouth. Simply put, everything you are believing for will come by your speaking it. Everything you are believing for will come as you say. You see, every time you are afraid to say that thing, you have disqualified yourself from enjoying it. You are only qualified to enter into that which you declare. Oh, I'm blessed. Dashing billions, dashing billions. Dashing cars, dashing houses. Ooh, building a state, building Amadoko Saya, raising multi billionaires, raising men of power, men of authority, men of influence. I see members of this church taking their seats in the positions of power. I see members of this church taking their place in entertainment, in government, in the legal structures of this nation, in education. I see members of this church, captains of industries, championing new innovations in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children are taught of the Lord, our marriages are enviable. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see this house growing in leaps and in bounds. We are expanding on every side, breaking forth on every side. We are, we are looking for room because the room we have is not enough to contain the increase that the Lord is bringing. That's the way we talk. Yeah. All the apostles say, why we set not our eyes upon the things that are seen, but upon those things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal and subject to change. Every situation is subject to the change that you command. 
Every situation is subject to the change that you command. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. Keep saying what you want to see. Stand in front of the mirror and prophesy to your image. Hold your checkbook and prophesy over it. Hold your employment letter. Speak over it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Speak over your pocket. Speak over your stores. It may look foolish. It may look stupid. But the things of this world, of, of, the, of, the, of the kingdom, are as foolishness to those who are wise. How can you explain? So we had the program in McCurdy. And the Lord said, um, how many of you want to give God a billionaire? Many people rushed out. I said, Lord, how do you differentiate who is going to give you what now? He said, ask them, who will give the first money that comes into their hand to God? Some people backed up because they know what the first money will be. Salary is coming very soon. So if salary enters our hand, how can we give that to God? When they did it, the Lord said that, just, okay, those are exempted, those are exempted. And then some came forward. Some of them came forward not even knowing where the money will come. Say, pray for them. We are anointed and pray for them. That night when I got back to the hotel, not less than five people, three to five people. I can't remember the accurate number. But by the following day, we had close to five, ten people calling in. People who had not expect, who were not expecting money from anywhere. Bam, bam, bam. So we're sending it to the church account. Yeah? The first money that entered their hand, they were just sending it, sowing it. Because I told them we have to beautify the church hall in Makodi. How will we leave Abuja, go to Makodi to go and hold church in New Anointing Makodi? Then we enter. There is like where they are selling Nuni and Bai. When we came from this kind of touche place. So I told them you must renovate the hall, okay? Buy, paint the walls, buy blinds. That money is for that project. Sir, the response is scary. Bam, 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 bam. It looked like foolish, foolishness when I was praying. But sir, some people, they said the monies that came, they were not, they didn't, they didn't plan, they didn't budget for it. People came under pressure suddenly to start paying people debt who came out. I want to give God the billion. I cannot tell you how God works. God works with your faith. So one of the guys called me, he said, Pastor, what? I was expecting like 30,000 to 50,000 so I could give. I wanted something substantial. I said to him, no. God said the first. Not the much. The first is the obedience, not the volume. Is the faith, not the amount. The first that came into your hand, give it to him. Woo! See what God will do. By the time we go back in October, I will come back with the testimonies. Put this on record too. Put it on record too. After the October conference, you will hear the testimony from that obedience for as many as have given that first fruit. He's not a man that he should lie. As a pastor, I've learned it. The power of words, the power of words, you can determine the destiny of a congregation by what you say. You can, I mean, let me shock you. I can give you a church, all right, of a thousand people, and you preach to them, and you come back and you look at that same church of a thousand people, and the way they are looking, same people, they are looking tired, they are looking beat down, they are looking moribund, they are looking scruffy, looking poor. They reflect a, a, a language that does not speak of greatness, of success, or the life that God has given to us. And you can give that same trust to another pastor. Bam! Give him three weeks. Boop, boop. You will feel even the atmosphere around the church will change. Words are powerful. Words are powerful. They are the tools with which we negotiate for destiny. Never allow the enemy to take advantage of your words. Say only that which you desire to see. And I prophesy, as you say, you will see in the mighty name of Jesus. The last key for consistent faith. The last key for consistent faith is consistent. Be consistent with your actions. Be consistent with your actions. See, why we are here. Somebody just transferred money from the Makodi church. Somebody has just, while we are talking, somebody just paid money into the church account, Makodi, for the project. I say it's scary what's happening. Forgive me. That's the same church I was told things are hard. Things are difficult. Things won't work. Yes, that's the same church they told me. And in one week, that church was able to sustain the entire program. You saw where the protocol was staying? They paid for it. Saka stayed in the hotel. All the guys that went with me, I insisted they must stay in the hotel where I'm staying. And the church that they told me can't sustain when they told me, ah, pastor, it's difficult, things are hard, I sent them a text. I didn't even pray. I said, I hold on to the staff of my prophetic ordination. If God called me, if God sent me, you will finish the meeting debt-free. Sir, to the glory of God, 
not one bill unpaid not one bill if you understand the power of words you will control the results of your life i would have agreed with them ah is i know makodi is tough oh makodi is this is it not from makodi somebody just send wired money now in the same makodi where they, so you see let me tell you the truth location does not inhibit the possibilities of a man it is a spiritual reality realities and understanding what you think of the spirit realm and how you engage the spirit realm is what determines your realities and I prophesy to somebody as you speak, you will see. The last is the acts or actions that we take. Be consistent with your actions. All Peter needed to do was keep his eyes on Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood said, If I can but touch the helm of his garment, I shall be made every with whole. And the Bible says she got up and she acted out her conviction of faith. If you are believing God for increase, don't act like someone who is not. Did you get what I said? If you are believing God for success, don't act like someone who is not. Listen, child of God, very soon you will be, we will be in our tent. We will come for midweek service. We will be looking for space to sit. I am conscious of it. It's not when we get there and start rehearsing. Hey, how does a pastor who has 1,000 members behave? How does he dress? How does he talk? How does he walk? How does he look? No, sir. I'm starting now. No, 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 no. This, you didn't get it. I'm starting now. I know where God is taking us. I'm rehearsing for that place. I'm preparing for that place. I'm not waiting to be taken unawares. Are you getting what I'm saying? Today, I got up and I said, Lord, how does a pastor who pastor multiple branches behave? He said, you will prepare messages for all the branches. I prepared the message for the Macaulay Church. Sent it to the pastor. I said, this is the direction the Lord is giving us. Just follow it. If you don't know what to preach, if you didn't pray, don't worry, my prayer covers you. I have prayed for all, all of us. I have prepared for everybody. You don't understand what it means. Yeah. I said, I pray for everybody. So just, if you want, just read it. Read it and prophesy. Miracles will happen. He said, Pastor. I said, yes. The Bible we are reading, we didn't write it. We are reading what somebody said God told him. Yet we are seeing miracles. If you read the word that God inspired your man of God to the congregation and prophesy, you will see miracles. He said, yes, sir. He's a businessman. No time to study like pastor study. So what do I do? I study for all of us. Preparing. Preparing. Take steps. Your actions should back where you believe God is taking you to. And they should be consistent. They should be what? Consistent. 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 Don't, catch, don't let anybody catch you unguarded. Consistent actions. And I pray for someone who is under my voice. As you keep this level of consistency, you will see your results produce consistently. Victory all the time. Doors open all the time. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is somebody blessed tonight? In the name of Jesus. And as you speak, nations answer. You call one and a thousand answer. You call ten and a thousand answer. You call ten thousand and a hundred thousand answer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. Oh, you are favored. You are not disadvantaged. You are not disadvantaged. Look at success all over you. Look at God's greatness all over you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Your best days are here already. They are here already. They are here already. It can only get better with you. Business can only get better. Family can only get better. Finance can only get better. The children can only get better. Your work with the Lord can only get better. It can only get better. It can only get better. It's getting better. It's getting better. You believe your amen is loud. Hallelujah. Someone just say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. One minute, just bow down your head, crystallize it with prayers.